our next guest is an internationally renowned author and journalist who started her career right here in Toronto. In her, yes, yeah, in, in her new memoir titled Where You End and I Begin, she shares her personal story of her unconventional relationship with her mother and explores how trauma is shared between women. Welcome to the show, Leah McLaren. Hello, thank, thank you, you for well, being come. here. So we're going to dive right in because that's precisely what you do in this book because you start off with this bombshell uh, and you discuss how in high school your mother confessed to you that uh, when she was in high school that or no when you were in high school your mother confessed to you that she was abused from a young age by her 45 year old married pony club instructor at the time she really mistook it for love uh, you begin with that tell us about that story well I wanted to write a memoir about myself and my mother and the memoir sort of tells the story of writing the memoir as well. So in order to do that, uh, you know, my relationship with my mother was very unconventional is right. It, she, her parenting uh, philosophy was benign neglect. She very, it was, it was funny, but it was true. We had an A4 tacked to the fridge saying commitment sucks the life right out, right out of you. She had left my dad and left our small town and went to the city in search of a career, and I followed her. Um, and then I wanted to write about that, but I also realized I had to write about her backstory and how mm -hmm. she became that kind of mother. Mm -hmm. um, and I could not tell that story without telling the story of her life, because the way she came to that and the way she delivered the story to me was she said, you know, I came to her with a trauma of my own, not as bad as hers, and she said, let me tell you my trauma, like a girlfriend, because that was how our relationship was. Mm -hmm. And she also said, you know, that trauma happened to me, and because of that, I got married too young, I had kids when I shouldn't have, and I then left your father when my father died, because I felt so ashamed. So it's sort of a book about how, uh, well, like the title says, it's about how stories flow into each other in generations of women. But it's also a story about how um, our culture has sort of turned victim narratives into currency. And when that happens, they get used as narratives of convenience. Mm -hmm. And that, that is an uncomfortable truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's also, I felt, worth talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating. It's about enmeshment. I think it's about mother-daughter relationships. It's about your unique story. Um, what's interesting as well, like your mother is a writer, and she mm -hmm. published a piece um, saying that she felt that you'd stolen her story. But, I mean, it is your story as well yeah. at the same time. So, um, And you've been very clear about that. So talk a little bit more about that. Well, my mother's a writer, too, and families of writers are not normal. I would just like this <laughs> at all, like at all. So I'm not pretending we're normal. Uh, but she's also, she also published a piece years ago about um, a six page piece in Chatelaine magazine without telling me when I was a columnist at the Globe and Mail saying she regretted motherhood. Ooh. So like, so there's a bit of history there, obviously, but it's so in the context of our relationship, it's not all that unusual to be, I guess, publishing pieces that are upsetting the other. And there is also what emerged uh, toward later in my relationship with her in my 20s was that there was a kind of rivalry, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. very still uncomfortable for me to talk about because I, I never felt it toward her. Mm -hmm. And I never have, she is my mother, she'll always be my mother. But I think because of what happened to her in part, she, you know, she has, I will always love her and she will always be in my head, but she has a limited capacity to kind of meet me as a parent and to a child. And I really think now that I'm a mother myself, you know, you don't have to be a perfect mother, but when your kid comes to you and says, what, like, what happened there? Even if you're 80 and the kid's 60, you have to meet them as mm -hmm. an adult. You have to meet them as a parent mm -hmm. yeah. and you have to be a parent. Yeah. You shared a little bit already here that you write about in the book that uh, you were eight years old, your parents divorced, your mother left. She decided to leave rural Ontario where you were growing up and went to the big city. I would imagine my daughter's eight right now, and if I just sort of up and left, I, I, I have no idea um, 
I mean, I just can't even imagine it. So how did you cope then with what I'm sure was seemingly an unimaginable loss in a way? Well, that's interesting. I mean, the, and part of the book is about what enmeshment does. It's codependency is the other term for it. And it's, it's very, very, very common. Mm -hmm. And it's not, uh, you know, it's not, no one's gonna call social services because, you know, you seem like the Gilmore girls. <laughs> Seriously, that's what yep. we were like. Everyone was like, you have a great relationship with your mother. And she would say to me, oh, you're so wise, you're so mature. And she'd tell me about her dating woes, but, you know, so what, ha and what that stemmed out of was when my mother left, I, I was eight years old. I couldn't reconcile. I was like, I love my mother. I miss my mother. Kids want the love of their parent. But I just, I couldn't, I think I couldn't like comprehend that she had left us. So I worshiped her, mm -hmm. you know, I had, and that worked for her too, mm -hmm. um, because I became her confidant and I became her biggest supporter. And it allowed me to reconcile the fact that my mom had left and also see her as a kind of feminist renegade. But when I had kids myself, I, I just, something in me just sort of almost was collapsing. I just thought, what happened there? Mm -hmm. And I needed to, that's what that book, what this book came out of. I needed to look at it as a mother myself, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, very, very quickly, what is your relationship now like with your mother? Well, it's uh, tricky. I know people come on, they write memoirs and it's like, and now I'm all better and everything's <laughs> great. <laughs> but that's not, this is a complicated truth. And the, yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky. You know, I, I love my mother. I will always love my mother. She will always be in my head and in my heart, but it is an ongoing mm -hmm. relationship, but it was never an easy relationship, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, it's a great uh, tease. Uh, it's a vulnerable piece. Uh, uh, you know, thank you for sharing a bit of your mm -hmm. story. And I mean, yeah, people need to get this book. Mm -hmm. This is what- Thank you so much. For everyone watching, the book is called Where You End and I Begin. It is out tomorrow. And you, our lovely studio audience, you're getting a copy of the book today. Right? Uh, okay, where you end and I begin. We'll be back right after this. Hey there, and thanks for sticking around. Wasn't that just fantastic? You know where you can get some more all-around great content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with all the laughs and thought-provoking chats you could ask for. So do yourself a favor, like and subscribe now.